All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, today we're going to be doing a install video on bash plates on my, my Pajero. So it's been an interesting journey um, over the last 15 years. I've made do with my factory intercooler plate and my booze sump bash plate. So what we're going to be doing today is we've um, bought some new gear. We've got some K-On gear today to do the install. Um, and I'll take you through the reasons I've picked this one in particular. There's multitudes on the market. So, but um, yeah, really looking forward for this install. Um, I'm sick of paying money for intercoolers. I've spent a couple of grand on them, literally in the last probably four or five weeks. So time to put in some decent um, underbody protection. All right, let's get started. So these are the two bash plates I had in previously. So we've got this one, this is the factory one. And from my recollections, this was only about two mil thick. I'll pop the calipers on and just let you know. On the last trip out to Cobor, and again, if you want to go check out the challenge, it was a pretty gnarly night, a bit of nightfall driving. Um, we pounded this bash plate quite a bit, and as a result of a newly installed intercooler, which was only two weeks old, <laughs> uh, we ruined it. <laughs> so, hence why that one had to go. This is the Booze Plash plate, which is about four mil thick, based on my recollections. We'll pop the caliper on that as well. Um, this one has stood the test of time. 15 years going strong. There's a little bit of bow in it all along the front lip and around the center, but it has protected everything with no issues. The only issues with these bash plates is the way they're designed with the bolt mounts is that uh, with these, probably not on that section there, but on those, is I've sheared a few bolts um, based on this sort of setup. So with the new k plates, which we'll take you through now, it's a different situation. All right, let's check them out. So these are the two new bash plates which have come through. The one on the left is the intercooler plate, and then the one on the right is the sump plate. Came beautifully packaged, <laughs> even wrapped in a bloody blanket <laughs> to protect it all. Now, with these plates in particular, the total weight of these two combined is 18 kilos or 17.8 kilos. Now, there's quite a few on the market. One I've been highly recommended, and the only thing that stopped me from doing it was probably a bit of cost, was the RHS aluminium plates, which are, I believe, six mil thick, and but they are super light. So if you want to go check out those, I'll pop a link below in the comments, but they, they come very highly recommended. So these ones were a bit cheaper, and again, it's obviously relative to the time, but I've gone for these ones in particular. Again, I, I don't think there's any sacrifice in quality, but one of the main reasons I've went for these, and these was all the factory bolt holes on the on the Mitsubishi Pajero, is that all of these all of these holes are recessed, which is fantastic. So this is going to stop the problem I had before with shearing bloody bolts. So there's the sump plate there. So again, all recessed, um, and then that one's all tucked up nice and high, so there'll be no issues there. Uh, you've also got the airflow on the front. So hopefully, again, dirt will get in, but hopefully we'll make it relatively easy for it to come out. And also with this one, the beauty is it's got the folds on the sides, which gives it the extra strength. Um, I noticed this too. It's got score marks like there was supposed to be folds. No, it's strengthening. They've yeah. bent them up. Okay, so with these score marks here, these have actually been bent up slightly. So it puts it up higher. All right, and another extra added feature is that there's a hole here. Um, for the drain plug on the sump. So you don't have to remove the bash plate. Bonus. All right, and I'll pop this on here. You can pause it if you like um, for all the information. And also comes with new bolts too. So um, you can also see here the welds on these. Again, I'm no welder. Can you tell me if they're any good or not? but I think we'll do the job quite nicely. So we'll see how we go. All right, I think this one should be quick and relatively easy. Let's get underneath. Again, obviously the old plates are removed. Let's pop this new one in and see how easy it is. Let's get so this here is the upper stabilizer bar, which what's gonna happen is you need to remove these bolts. And then what's gonna happen is this will end up having the stabilizer bar 
go underneath it like that and then you'll pop the bolts through here okay nice and simple um yeah all right all right guys so you can see we've removed the other bash plate so what we're going to do is we're going to be utilizing this screw hole here and that screw hole down there so we'll take those two off we'll get them clean up we'll run a tap through it just to make sure it's nice and right then on top of that over here we have this was where the stabilizer bar was okay so you got this hole here and then this hole over here so we've taken those out we're on the tap through and then i think we're going to be utilizing this other bolt here okay just behind the intercooler and then this one here behind the intercooler and then there's this other one up here which was from the original factory bash plate okay so these are the m8s and then the rest should be all m10s um, unless they've been ripped out previously and retapped all right let's get started all right guys so we've popped the two back bolts in now we're going to do is sit this cross brace on top yep and then that's it So all right guys so it's a bit hard to film under here as we're doing it so the two bolts at the back are the m8s they've gone in nice and easy now these two here um are m10s okay but what's important is the stabilizer bar goes underneath then you have the bush the bash plate um and then the bolt and the washer okay but that went in nice and simple and you've got the hole in the middle for the sump plug nice and easy they've thought of everything and there's a bit of clearance between here and what it's protecting all right so next section now is the front bash plate so there's another set of holes um just here just behind the inner intercore on both sides that's where it will be fixed to and you've got these these are the factory holes also um, we're utilizing the bolts that came with the bash plate for the front two here and the rear two at the back but these two here we had to get um, different bolts so the the kit comes with six m8s all the same so i assume they're probably all m8 from the factory all right and obviously i've got a bigger intercore so let's hope it clears that nice and easy which i think it will all right next step So we're going to lift this one into place, which is a bit warm. She's been sitting in the sun. Uh, the washers are no good. No good. Okay. Uh, these bolts are going to be no good. We're not going to get a socket around it, are we? No. Right. Take them out. is a bit of a problem. Stop. All right, guys. So we've run into a bit of a difficulty, right? Because we've got... Because the... This is designed to take M M8 bolts, which have a small head on them, right? If you have the M8s, no worries. But if you have to use an M10 which has got a larger head, you can't get the socket inside it to tighten it up. So we've had to come up with a solution, which is not ideal. So we've had to put a couple of washers and a bolt as a bit of a spacer. There's still plenty of meat on this side to get bolted in. This is only a temporary solution. What we really need is automotive nuts, which have a bit of a flared bottom and a skinnier top. We'll try and locate some of those, but this also to get it in, in the short term so we can finish this job. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, we'll lift her into place. Cool. Um,
Now, one second is that. Let's try and think just, just to, maybe it just needs to be forced into place. The, it's definitely not touching the intercooler, yeah? No, nah, miles off. Yeah, okay. But yeah. when you push that up then? No. Nah. Okay, mine feels like there's resistance. I don't know if it's just because the nut's not in properly. It's all right, you get yours on. That's it. Cool. I don't think mine's gone in the right angle or something. Yeah, I think it was at the right angle. It's pulling up now. Yeah. That's it. I suppose the other thing too is the way it's sitting there, you're not going to shear them off. No, no. All right. So there you go. So you can see it's just sitting out just about three mil past it, which is okay. But again, I don't like the idea of packing out with washers and bolts. It's not a, not ideal. All right, we'll pop these in, which are the factory holes. I'm using the bolts that um, we're provided. Yep. Oh. That's nice and neat. That's beautiful. I like the design too. It's um, I like this too. The way this overlaps the that, back one, yeah, which is great. I love no protruding bolts, and it looks like it's far enough for the, from the intercooler to take a bit of a hit. Yeah, yeah, and not affect it. To me, it looks like there's about maybe 15, 20 mil between the bottom of the intercooler and, the, and plate. the plate so and then these bent sides as well mm. so that's going to give it strength from um actually when it does take a hit because the the factory one mate it's just it's tiny yeah it's really good all right a little bit of stuffing around but we've got it done <laughs> done all right um cool Let's move on to the next job. All right, guys, that completes the installation of the bash plates. It was a pretty simple, straightforward process. Um, I unfortunately had the issue in relation to, obviously, um, having to, in the past, oversize um, the holes because of shearing of bolts. So but otherwise, again, if you've got everything factory, um, you'll have no issues. In, in this instance, I've gone for the K-On plates. For me, <laughs> it was a bit about price. Uh, there's quite a few different ones on the market, do your research. There's another uh, good mob out there, RHS Off-Road Engineering. They do some amazing bash plates. Uh, there's a few different options made out of either marine grade or aircraft grade aluminium um, alloy. So I'll pop a link down below, go and check them out. They're a little bit pricey, but you get what you pay for. So if you're actually really looking for really tough stuff, lightweight, um, give them a look. Otherwise, I'll do some future updates in the future on how these go. I dare say that they should stand up to quite a bit of punishment. We do, I do a lot of off-road stuff, so uh, you'll, you'll get um, a good view into sort of how they hold up. I'm sure they'll be fine. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, um, share it around to friends and family. And yeah, if you enjoy the channel, um, subscribe maybe. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Cheers.